It's on a Nintendo Switch finally. It's got crossplay with PC, but they can't see PC because Nintendo doesn't let them. Hurry up and buy it and play. <laughs> when you said your name was Galactic Dominator, I thought you. Ludo, no? Bees comes from the hit mobile Android game, Psycard. It's a 1v1 minesweeping card game set in the cozy cyberpunk dystopia. The game is played with a series of cards laid face down. The player and opponent take turns flipping a card over to reveal its contents. The players can use psychic abilities fueled by star power to help reveal hints about the surrounding card or sabotage their opponent. Drawn cards can reveal hints for surrounding fruit, stars, or skulls nearby. The player must acquire three fruit in order to win the round. If the player or opponent draws a skull, however, the round immediately ends and their opponent earns points for the round. Bees is one of the four playable characters at the start of the game. He mooches off his cyborg buddy named Friend, along with three other friends. Bees is considered the flirtatious one of the group, and his psychic powers are used to hinder his opponent's abilities. Bees may be naturally fit for the occult as well, as seen in a specific event called Psycard for Slew Wrath. There he begins to power up in the presence of our lord and savior, Slew Wrath. He also has a brother named Wasp, who is genetically altered to have his hair grow like candy. Beast is simply an alternative skin for Frollin, therefore his moveset is exactly the same as hers. The only noticeable difference is that Frollin's capsules are replaced with side cards when you're playing as Bees. Bees also makes an appearance in the bonus retro dungeon crawler within Psycard, named Friend's Quest. He's an item that can be picked up behind the boss and gives a permanent stat boost when mixed with Friend. Look, they're making out. I've done a silly video that goes into much more detail about Psycard. The game is available to download for free on PC, with Reckness Loja having made a version that enables online play. I've put a link to the download in the description below. Ludo also know. Orca also comes from the old Android mobile game, Healthy Weapon. Healthy Weapon is a mobile 1v1 fighting game developed by Regnus Loja and published by Ludosity released on September 25, 2012. That means I missed the 10th anniversary by one day at the time of uploading this video. The game starts off with a roster of six characters, each wielding a fruit and or vegetable as a weapon. The reason for Healthy Weapon at that time was to fill in the void of fighting games on smartphones. The idea for simple controls was for two players to be able to play on the same phone, or preferably a tablet at the same time. Healthy Weapon uses four buttons on each side of the screen that can simply be tapped to play. The buttons include a jump and three separate attacks. Each attack can be performed on the ground or in the air. Orca's special attacks in Slap City are references to her Healthy Weapon moveset. Also, the extras menu in Slap City reveals that her melons have names, and I will not be attempting to pronounce their names. Blocking is done by simply doing nothing. The player can also dash back and forth by tapping an empty space in the indicated direction. The game also features an arcade mode to unlock more characters. The story for Healthy Weapon is kept intentionally vague, as there really wasn't a plot outline for the game, but it can be inferred by characters' victory quotes through arcade mode. There are two notable villains, with Deathism acting as the main antagonist. He rules the interest club in Empire, and seems to be the big villain that the heroes are trying to take down. And Mendero, the tomato-based brawler, reveals to be an even bigger villain as seen in one of the three canonical screenshots of the game. Orca is the melon using basher who is on the side of the heroes. She's good friends with an unplayable background character named Opa Hoppa, who shows up in Orca's stage along with an apathetic frog cameo. It's revealed in Slap City's extras that the two live together in the mountain shack. The game also has a survival mode, where a cybernetic clone of the character of a pineapple swinging Mildegrad can be unlocked. Orca's canonical pick shows her snacking out while Opa Hoppa fixes up one of these clones that have been turned over to the side of the heroes. Maybe. Orca's alternative skin is based off a secret mode in Healthy Weapon. Completing arcade mode on the hardest difficulty unlocks Ned World mode. Ned World features a darker version of the cast, with their genders reversed. There's also a cameo from Bunny, a character from Regnus Loja's other mobile game, Bunny Bun. There is no arcade or platform Ned World. All the grimdark characters now wield actual weapons, and Orca's counterpart is Lemon, who uses a pair of metal spike balls. Characters now have blood particles upon being harmed, and death results in a character bursting into large circular particles, similar to that of Mega Man. Due to the engine of Healthy Weapon, the application ironically suffered slowdowns on newer smartphones, and thus has been delisted off the Play Store. Regnus Loja, however, has created a PC port for the game, available for Windows. Regnus Loja even balanced the game back in 2018, when he requested on some fighting game forums for people to critique his game. Healthy Weapon had a planned sequel called Super Healthy Weapon, 
Sadly, development for the game did not go far. Rignus Loja posted a small work in progress on YouTube and stated that if development continued, then Orca's friend, Hopa Hopa, would have been playable and use an eggplant. Orca makes a cameo in my favorite Ludosity game, Card City Nights. She returns as Bunch's Miner and can be seen working at the Bear Mine. She attempts to cheer up her co-worker, who happens to be Veteran Miner, aka Goddess of Explosion's husband and official Bear Miner. Repeatedly talking to her prompts some humorous dialogue about Rain, which is a little jab at the fact that the game jab title, Bear Miner, was rewarded with the worst Rain graphics award. She can be challenged repeatedly for the Martian Booster Pack. She also shows up as a common defense card. Orca also appears on a rare card in Card City Nights 2. Placing her down heals 1 HP and then deals 1 damage to the player with the highest HP when resolved. Ludo no? Cruiser Tetron is the main antagonist of her Mars Shareware Arena shooter title, Hero. The original game was released all the way back in 2004, created using click and play. The game was created over the span of 3 months before where Mar were made it entirely in Game Maker within a single week. The game features 6 stages. Each stage has a generator that must be destroyed to open paths, as well as a super gun pickup that upgrades your firepower, but only during that stage. The player controls Flip Hero, who must travel deep into Tetron's base located in an asteroid. He is creating a mass army of machines to take over the Earth, and it's up to Hero to stop him. Remar states that Flip Hero was based on a superhero fantasy he had as a child, and was the hero he wished to be. Hero himself was based on an Atari 2600 game called H-E-R-O. Cruiser Tetron acts as the final boss, where he incorporates the entire final level. He is a machine himself, and can only be defeated by shooting at his head. Tetron's name was inspired by a boss from the NES Gradius title, Life Force. The menu included in the download of Hero also reveals that Tetron's appearance is based on Shredder from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cruiser Tetron reappears again in a sequel, Hero Core, in which Flip Hero tries to find a way to not only destroy Tetron, but to destroy him for good. While the game retains its retro aesthetics, the sequel has much more significant improvements and upgrades. It plays like a Metrovania, and the player must explore various parts of the asteroid to defeat bosses and obtain permanent upgrades. Due to the open exploration aspect of the game, the player can actually rush to defeat Cruiser Tetron from the beginning. However, it's not advisable for new players without obtaining power-ups. This time the asteroid has a map along with multiple save locations that act as warp points. The next recommended boss is also designated with a question mark to help new players along. Remar states on his website that he didn't want dying to be costly. He was also annoyed by Castlevania's Symphony of the Night's travel distance, which is why he implemented a warp anywhere mechanic for Hero Core. Terminals that can be found across the asteroid gives a bit more insight into Cruiser Tetron's lore. Tetron believes in a war that had ended long ago is still going on, and that he is simply following his programming to create an army and continue his attack. Cruiser Tetron's final battle also changes when the player collects all 10 terminals. During the ending, Hero sympathizes with Tetron, assuring him that their battle has completely ended and the two can finally rest. There are implications that Tetron possibly created Flip Hero himself. Whether it was for Tetron to take himself out is unknown. Once again, during the final battle, Tetron's head is the only thing that can be damaged, and when enough hits are landed, he crashes to the ground unable to move, but also begins to fire every last weapon he's got. Tetron's moveset in Slap City is largely original, with the exception of the wavy projectile for his neutral special. Cruiser Tetron doesn't make any major appearances outside of card cameos in Card City Knights 1 and 2. Flip Hero himself, however, returns as Celery Man in Card City Knights 1, where he offers the valuable card alchemy service to the player, where the player can mix and match compatible cards and create new unique cards. Tetron just appears on the Uncommon Revive card that revives every disabled card if taken out. And in Card City Knights 2, Tetron is a rare card that deals 2 damage when resolved. The Hero series makes multiple appearances across Rimmar's other games. Their first notable appearance is Hero 3D, a hidden minigame that can be accessed in Sector 6 of Iggy. Hero 3D has 9 levels that repeat with increasing difficulty. Each level has the player destroy generators to lower barriers while avoiding the Tetron Spy Sentry that shoots homing missiles at Hero if it sees him. If the player does get spotted, then they can rush to cover at one of the many walls in the background. The song title that plays is a remix created by Captain Goodnight. It's a chiptune cover of Makine Supremacy's Hero. There is another rendition of Hero in Remar Sherwood title Strawberry Jam. Strawberry Jam is a platforming story game released in 2016. The player controls a strawberry named Jam, who hails from Meadow Valley, which is referenced as a stage in Slap City. The game is focused more on story and NPC interactions, where several small actions that the player takes can create a unique event or dialogue change. Hidden near the start of the game is a retro LCD game console that plays Hero. 
Hero can only move up and down, but he still shoots left and right to defeat enemies. There is a map in the upper left, and the objective is to destroy more generators. At the end of the fourth stage, however, the player faces Cruiser Tetron, and upon defeat, the game loops while increasing difficulty. And finally, the most obscure hero reference that I know so far is an NDS homebrew title developed by Ramar titled Melandro. It's a simple physics game where the player must land a ship on a landing bay while using as little fuel as possible for a higher score. The tenth stage has an alternative landing bay that the player can access by gliding through the bottom wall. In doing so, they reveal a hidden eleventh stage featuring Flip Hero. Well, that's it for this triple threat of Alunano. I just wanted to thank you guys for watching, and uh, you know, I just hope these videos help you try out all the other games. For now, I've been enjoying the crossplay on the Nintendo Switch because my god, that online play is so buttery smooth. Anyways, that's it for me. See ya.